Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are doing a rundown, a rundown of Korean sunscreens. I have in front of me 13 different sunscreens that I've been testing out for almost a year now. And I have some clear favorites and I have some that I never use because they are so terrible. I mean, I have used, they're just really not great. Okay, so before I jump in, I do wanna mention that all of these are affordable sunscreens. I tried my hardest not to go over, I think it was like $10 in the beginning. That kind of got a little difficult, but they're pretty much all under $20. If they're not, um, it's only because like the larger size is more expensive and then the smaller one is less. So of course, like if you can only find the larger one, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they do typically come in smaller sizes as well. So that's a big part of this. It is affordable. I wanna make it available to most people and hopefully still get you a really great sunscreen that you will want to apply because that is key. If you don't like your sunscreen, if you don't wanna apply it, you're not gonna wear it. If it's easy, if it's seamless, you're gonna put it on every day. I'm gonna be putting every single one on my face. I'm gonna be showing you what it looks like and I'm gonna be talking through why I like some and why I don't like others. I will also have a spreadsheet of all of the facts because I don't want this video to be eight hours long and I think sometimes it's more helpful to just be able to compare and contrast and like who doesn't love a good Excel spreadsheet, right? <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. But before we get going, definitely make sure you are subscribed because I do put out videos on sunscreens pretty often. Um, it's one of my loves in life and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. So please make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you see when I upload. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't matter to me. I mean, it kind of does, but only to my heart and soul. <laughs> okay, so let's just jump in. I'm going to be going through them in order of my favorite to my least favorite, mainly because I can't stand when I have to skip ahead to the very last minute to watch like, you know, the climax of the video basically. And I feel like you guys would appreciate that, right? So if you do appreciate not having to skip ahead to the best one, definitely like this video and comment that maybe you didn't have to skip ahead. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, let's go. There's gonna come a point where my hair is gonna go up and it's gonna stay up. Right now it's down and that's a miracle in itself. <laughs> um, actually, I used a new shampoo. I know you guys don't wanna hear this right now, but I used a new shampoo and conditioner and my hair is super soft. This is actually naturally curly, um, so I'm digging it today. I just messed it up. <laughs> okay, let's start. Okay, number one, this is the Bonabaji Milk Thistle Repair Sunscreen. It's SPF 50 plus PA++++. So very high rating, very beautiful sunscreen. I have this in the size 50 milliliters or 1.69 fluid ounces. It also comes in a larger size. Um, they were out of it when I went to purchase it. So I got this size and I'm still loving it. And also I have so many sunscreens that I don't need the largest one until I know I love it. So so the Banabaji is definitely one of my favorites. I recommend it to so many people because it goes on effortlessly. It has no white cast. It leaves your skin feeling so nice. It's a great base for makeup, whatever else you want to put on. Unfortunately, it's been out of stock in a lot of places and it's definitely not one of the cheapest, but it is one that I recommend to friends and family all the time because if you're serious about your sunscreen, this is one of the easiest ones to put on. It'll make you want to keep wearing it. As you can see, the application is so easy. It takes very little rubbing. It also leaves you with a nice dewy finish. I recommend you using this with a serum. I have the Triple Crown Serum that I make. And when I put the two in combination, people stop me and ask me what is on my face because the glow is just that otherworldly. Next up, we have Dr. Vita Clinic Free C Sun Lotion. This is SPF 50 plus PA++. So the same as the Bonabaji. And I have this in the same thing, which is 50 milliliters or 1.69 fluid ounces. This is another stellar sunscreen. It is weightless. It blends in seamlessly. It really feels nice on the skin and it's easy to apply, which are some of the reasons that I love to wear it. It also gives you just a glowy, radiant skin. I would say both the Bonabaji and this one are gonna be if you want a dewier finish. 
This one feels so good. It's got the most kind of like luxurious but hydrating feel. It feels like a drink of water for your skin. My only concern is if people are sensitive to their skin or just to scents in general. This one does have more of a citrusy scent than the Bonabaji. The Bonabaji, I don't know if it even has a scent. It doesn't seem like it. Um, maybe just more of a sunscreen smell. But this one has a clear added fragrance. It's not bad at all. I actually really like it. But if you are somebody who's sensitive to scents, it may not be the one for you. But it does just give you this radiant, glowy skin look all day. So the last two were definitely my top two. I recommend all the time to everyone. They are beautiful. They just go on seamlessly, very little scent, just perfect. Now, the next like handful are kind of in the middle and I don't necessarily have them ranked um, just because it kind of depends on the day, it kind of depends on what you want, um, but I will go through them. But just know that I'm not gonna be able to rank them like hard and fast, three, four, five, six, that kind of thing. Okay, so the first one I have is the S, this is the Misha Essence Sun SPF 45 PA++. So we're down from 50 SPF to 45 and we're down from four PAs to three. So a little bit less SPF, but still pretty good coverage. And this is the same 50 milliliters or 1.69 fluid ounces. One of the first things I noticed about the Misha is it does have a scent. It's not bad, it smells florally, it smells kind of like a little bit grandmotherly, but not in a terrible way, and the scent doesn't last at all. It does have a bit of a more creamy consistency as opposed to the other two, which really have like a gel consistency. And so as you can see, it takes a little bit more time to blend in, but I do find that it blends in pretty easily. I like that it's a higher SPF, um, but it's not as high as the other two, so that is something to consider. It's also available for purchase on Amazon, which I really like. Sometimes these sunscreens can be a little tricky to find just because they're coming from Korea. So this is a good mid-level option and I highly recommend it. Next up we have the Beat Shield. This is Crave Beauty. This is kind of an American brand, but technically the brand is Korean and they kind of had to make this the beat shield a bit differently than the one that they sell in Korea because the SPF filters that they use in that are not cleared to be used in the US. So they kind of had to change the name, change some things just so that they could sell it in the US. Um, and you can see on here, it's not called an, a sunscreen. It's called an antioxidant day fluid. So it, it can't be called an SPF just because of those filters, but it is a sunscreen. If you go to their website, they talk about it more, um, but I will leave it at that for now. So as I mentioned, this is an antioxidant day fluid. They cannot call it a sunscreen, but it does have beetroot, allotoin, vitamin C, reversitrol, and EGCG. It goes on absolutely beautifully, and it is very fluid like the name would suggest. It does appear that there's a little bit of a white cast in the video, but that's not actually true when real life. Um, it just goes on very simply and it's a great option for you out there. They are out of stock right now and they tend to be out of stock. So it's not my top one just because people can't find it as easily as I would wish. Next up, we have the Make Prem. This is UV Defense Me um, Blu-ray Sun Fluid and it's SPF 50 plus PA++++. So we're back at that high level, all four pluses, 50 SPF. And this also is 50 milliliters or 1.69 fluid ounces. This one also comes in a larger size, um, but again, I always kind of go with the smaller one to see if I like it before I get the larger one. So this one does have a tiny bit of a white cast, but that's actually pretty impressive because this is a physical sunscreen. It has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, it also has no added fragrance, which is really nice. So this would be one of my best options for those of you who have more sensitive skin, want a physical sunscreen, and definitely have a lighter skin tone. It might have a little bit of a cast if you do have a deeper skin tone, but really minimal for a physical sunscreen. Okay, back again. This one is the Can Make 
Mermaid Skin Gel UV, SPF 50 plus PA++++. Plus plus plus. And this comes in 40 grams. So 40 milliliters, it's gonna be a little bit less than 1.69 fluid ounces. Um, and it is kind of tiny, like it fits in my hand. <laughs> okay, let's put it on. So this is another one that is a gel and it's very fluid. It's one of my absolute favorite ones. And I would highly recommend this one for people who have more oily skin because it does dry a little bit more matte. I don't wanna say it dries matte, but it's not as dewy as some of the others. So it gives you just more of a natural finish once it's dried down. Um, I like to wear it underneath makeup. It works really well like that. And it just goes on so seamlessly. So it's definitely high up on my list. Next up, we have the Apu. I'm not sure how you say it. It's the Pure Block Daily Sunscreen, and this is the largest one that we have. It is 100 milliliters, or 3.3 fluid ounces, and it's a SPF 45 and PA++++, so three pluses. This one retails for 9.30 on YesStyle. That's for the 50 milliliter. I have it in the 100 milliliter, but it is one of the cheaper ones out there. It blends in very nicely. I wouldn't say as seamlessly as some of the others and not as invisible, but really minimal rubbing to get it to blend in. It does have a bit of a citrusy scent. So if you are someone who does not like a scent, this is not the one for you. It actually reminds me very much of the Free Sea Sun Lotion one in terms of how it blends in and the scent. I love both of them and I love that this one comes in the 100 milliliter size. It's one of my favorites for sure. All right, so those first two kind of portions were my top ones. I recommend all of them for various reasons. Of course, the first few are my very favorites that I highly recommend. Sometimes they are out of stock, so if they're not available, then I kind of go down the list. Now, in the second portion of things, it's where things get a little trickier. We'll call it the third quarter <laughs> of sunscreens are gonna be ones that work really well, but I do have some issues with them and I just, think that you can find a better one, um, but I still kind of recommend them. So they're like a quasi recommend. And then of course the last ones are gonna be ones that I think are not great at all and just don't waste your money on. So let's jump into it. So this one you've probably seen because a lot of people really like this. This is the Biore UV Watery Essence. This is SPF 50 PA++++. This is 50 grams or milliliters and 1.69 fluid ounces. I will just say off the bat, the next two, the reasons that I don't recommend them as highly is because I find that the alcohol content in them, um, while I can't, I don't know the percentages, I do just feel like it dries my skin out a little bit and you can smell kind of the alcohol in it. So that's kind of why they're lower down the, on the list. They do both apply really beautifully though. This one has so many pluses to it. As you can see, it's very fluid. It has absolutely no white cast at all. And I love that it kind of blends in seamlessly. It doesn't leave you with too dewy skin, kind of a solid base just for anything. It doesn't look like you have anything on your face once it dries down. It's also relatively cheap, $15 on Amazon. My biggest complaint is that it does smell a bit like alcohol. So for those of you with drier skin, more mature skin, it's not something I would wanna put on my face every single day, which is what you should be doing with sunscreen. But if you do have more oily skin, it might not be bad at all. So that's just what I found. Next up, we have the Shiseido UV, this, whoa upside down. <laughs> this is the Shiseido Sanka. So it's SPF 50 PA++++ and it comes in 40 milliliters. The problem with this is I have found that at least with Yes Style, which is where I typically buy these, it's not available there. So I'm going to do some digging to see if I can find it elsewhere. If not, um, it is something to keep in mind, but again, it's at the like third half of my list. So it's not the most important one that you need to go out and get. So this one may be the most fluid of all of them. It really just feels like um, milk or water on your face and you can see how easily it blends in. No white cast, of course, it is chemical again, but no white cast at all. My biggest issue, like the last one, is it smells very strongly of alcohol, even more so than the Biore one. 
and it does come in the smallest size. It's very tiny. It's 40 milliliters. I could only find it in a two pack and that was for about $18, but I think there are better options out there for sure. Next up, we have Thank You Farmer. This is Sun Protect Water Sun Cream. This is 50 SPF 50 PA++. They say that it is 50 milliliters or 1.75 fluid ounces. So I guess they're giving us an extra 0.6. I don't know why. So this one is lower down on my list because A, it doesn't blend in as nicely as I would like. As you can see, I could have put a little bit less on and done it in layers and it probably would have done been easier to blend in. But that said, it's still $26 for 50 milliliters, which is the same price as all the others. And it does take a bit more rubbing. It also has a pretty distinct scent. It's not a bad scent, but it does feel like it lingers longer. I can smell it on my face after I've applied it, which the others that have a scent, they just kind of dissipate after a little bit. My suggestion for this, if you already have it, if you want to get it, it's not a bad sunscreen at all. Just do it in thinner layers than what I did. I'm so used to doing these thin ones that go on seamlessly that I forgot. And this one, you just really need a little bit less and then layer it up. So then it applies nicely. Okay, we're down to the final three, which means I have put 10 sunscreens on my face already. And honestly, I feel like I'm gonna be protected today. I have been taking each one off afterward though, so don't think I'm just like piling them on. I don't want the previous ones to affect what the next one is going to look like, so I'm taking everything off and I have just a clean face on. So let's get into the last three, starting off with the Cozarex. Um, typically this is a brand that is really great and I was really excited for this one, but it's in the final fourth of my sunscreen, so that tells you something. And this is the Aloe Soothing Sun Cream, SPF 50 PA++++. So only three pluses, whereas some of the others with the SPF 50 had four pluses. This is also 50 milliliters or 1.69 fluid ounces. This one I really wanted to like because it is one of the more affordable ones, but I find even when you do it in thinner layers, it does leave more of a white cast than almost all of the others. And I don't like that. And that's even after blending it in and it does take a while to blend in. The other thing is it does have a bit of a scent to it. As the name suggests, it says it's aloe soothing. I don't know if it smells exactly like that, but this is another one like the Thank You Farmer that I feel like I can smell it after I apply it and it stays a little too long for my liking. I have tried this one in thinner layers and I still find that it has a bit more of a white cast. So if you do have a darker skin tone, I would suggest almost any of the ones before this Okay, so we are at the very last two and I'm actually going to do them kind of in combination just because, um, well, they're kind of the same. <laughs> so I did get both of these at the same time and I thought they were really gonna be a lot different, but as you can tell, well, if you can look at the labels, the only thing that's different is this one says whitening UV and this says snail UV. So that said, they could have like totally different formulations but I have found that both of them are pretty terrible and I just don't like either. So I'm gonna save you the time and I'm gonna save my face and I'm gonna do half and half so you guys can see what it looks like. These are by the brand Jigot, Jigot, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and they are both SPF 50 and PA++++, so three pluses. They both come in 70 milliliters, which is kind of more than most of the others, which are about 50 or 40 milliliters. Still not as much as the Apu 100 milliliters, but quite a bit. So let's put the snail one on this side and then the whitening on the other. I almost don't want to talk about these because they kind of have all the things that I dislike in a sunscreen. They're heavier, a bit chalky in, in application. They definitely leave a white cast and they have a scent. So they're pretty much everything that I don't look for. For that reason, I really don't feel like it's necessary to talk about them a lot. I would never re repurchase them. You can find them for a cheaper price than some of the others, but it's because they are not very good in my opinion.
So I don't really have much to add about this one. I really think it's the same formula. I think they repackaged it and kind of added maybe one or two ingredients and tried to play it off like it was something else. But it's not something I recommend at all. You can find American sunscreens that are better than this. So don't waste your time and effort in having it shipped from Korea. You can tell how frustrated and how long this took. Okay, so that is all 13. Of course, there are more sunscreens out there and I don't have all of them, but these are more affordable, if not downright cheap sunscreens. So of course I could have bought ones that were like $30, $40, but the whole goal of this is that you can find a really great affordable sunscreen and just not break the bank. So if you have any questions about any of them, feel free to ask me. Like I said in the beginning, I, I kind of did go from favorite to least favorite. So I don't have necessarily number one, number two. They're just, some of them are so good and so similar that I can't rank them. But I would say anything in the top half, so like the top six or seven, maybe even eight, those are all highly, highly recommended. I love them all. So if you can't find one, it's not in stock. Some of the others are gonna do the job. And don't forget to look at the spreadsheet because I do mention if it is for dry skin, if it's gonna be more matte finish, all of those types of application things that I may not have touched on, but I tried to get to in this video. So it's a lot of information. Of course, if you have questions, please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. But don't forget, subscribe, like, and I will see you guys in my next video. Until then, bye.